Hello and welcome to the August 9th online worship service for West Des Moines United Methodist Church. My name is Mark Wilson and I'm really glad you took the time to watch this worship service today. Please take a look at the Pathways. That's our monthly publication that just came out last week. Please take a look at that to see what's going on in the life of our church. And then also the link. That's our weekly publication. Please make sure you take a look at that. And within the link, as always, are the cares, prayers, and joys. Please keep all of those folks and situation in your prayers this week. Thank you for tuning in to this worship service. I pray that we all feel God's presence with us during this time. Good morning. I want to welcome you to worship at West Des Moines United Methodist Church. Worship is one of the most important things we do. We turn ourselves to God. We leave ourselves open to hear God's story and to share ours with God and one another. And I'm really grateful to be doing that with you this morning. Are you ready for worship today? I hope that you've somehow settled in. Maybe you can take a deep breath at this point. Um, it's been a busy week, I'm sure, for you as it has been for so many people. You've just done the best you can to get online, to, to come to this moment. And so now, can we just breathe in what it means to be in worship? Will you share with me in a time of prayer? Holy God, we pray that in the next few minutes you might be with us, that our hearts might be especially open to you, that our minds and our souls are open to what you would have us learn and see and do. And in turn, Lord, give us the courage to share our lives with you, to just settle in this time, to know that worship is really a time to let go of all that holds on to us and to reach into the depth of love you offer to us. Lord, we've come to worship. May we worship with you today. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Well, welcome.
Americans, it's good to have just this special time with you. I am in Ledges State Park, and um, today I have um, something special I want you to do. We're going to be talking in the sermon and in the message today about what it means to be holy, what it means to belong to God. And so I want you to do something kind of curious. In the next week or so, I want you to get together with an adult, and it might be grandpa or grandma, it might be your parents, it might be on uh, an aunt or uncle, it might be in person, might be Zoom, might be on the telephone. And what I want you to do is to take time together with each other and each of you tell a story. Tell a story about something that happened in your life that you really enjoyed, that it was a time that you felt was really special. If you look behind me, you'll see that there are some kids uh, playing in some water, and I think there's even some motorcyclists going by. I want you to tell about a time and to share that with a loved one. And as you do, what I want you to notice is just in the sharing, in the talking to somebody you love, it becomes holy. Your adult, and hopefully you, will see how special it is just to share our lives with each other. So that's your homework, to tell a story about a moment in your life that was important to you or a time or something you enjoyed. Maybe it's jumping in a stream like these kids are, and then share it with an adult. And then I'd ask your adult afterwards to just give a little prayer thanking God it's our task to be reminded all the time that God is with us, that our very lives are holy. So I want you to take this time to do that, will you? Let me offer a prayer, and I will say the prayer as we so often do. I'll leave a little um, space for you to repeat what I'm saying, okay? All right, join me in prayer. Holy God, there are times in our lives when we remember you are with us. When we share those moments with other people, they become holy. So this week, Lord, let us tell our stories and remember you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, that seems like a simple thing, but too often we don't stop and tell our stories. So this week, that's your homework, to share your life, to share your story with an adult and for them to tell you a story. Have a great week, everybody. Good morning, my name is Priscilla. I was the summer intern at West Des Moines last summer. And this year I'm out in Montrose, Colorado and Pastor Cindy asked me to read scripture because I'm in the mountains and I was told that you all are talking about mountains. So right behind me are the San Juan Mountains and today's scripture is Exodus chapter 19 verses 2 to 8. They had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, Everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. May God add God's blessing to the reading and hearing and living of the scripture. Amen. This morning in our sermon series, we continue with the series we started last week. We're heading to the mountains. Now last week, Pastor Trevor was actually in Colorado, in the Rocky Mountains, on location for his sermon. I don't have that kind of luxury. I am not there. And most of our sermon series, none of us will be in the mountains. We'll be um, headed to the mountains, maybe in pictures that we have, if we've traveled there. We'll be headed to the mountains in scripture because certainly people in scripture went to the mountains a lot. And maybe we'll be headed to the mountains Iowa style. 
Now, right now, I am in Ledges State Park, and um, this is what mountains in Iowa look like. You know, not exactly mountains, but still beautiful. Ledges State Park is near um, Boone, and if you haven't been up here and driven through in a while, it's something we can do this summer in this time when we are feeling so uh, isolated. Mountains, creation, has always inspired people. I think when we look at some sort of cliff that leads us up, it makes us think about God and the power of God lifts us up from maybe what's happening in the, our lives around us. So today, we're headed to the mountains with the Israelites. Will you join me in a moment of prayer? Lord, this scripture, the story of these Israelites stuck, really. You know, they were somewhere between slavery and freedom. Maybe that's true of us as well. We find ourselves between a time when we're captured by what's going on around us and the freedom that you offer. Lord, we pray that we take this scripture in, that we walk along with the Israelites. We camp with them a little bit. We hear what you have given them, what you have asked them to do. And may we, Lord, hear those same words in our lives and follow you. I would ask, Lord, that you look kindly on this pastor and on everyone who's gathered watching this service today. May uh, all that we do and think and be in today and in the days ahead, may it be acceptable to you. We offer this in the strong and certain name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, let's head up the mountains. When I read this scripture, it had me at the part about camping. Are you a camper? I kind of like camping, and I know now that some of you, just in saying that, some of you are probably going, oh, ick. And I get that, you know, we go camping and uh, the bathroom is down the road. There's a certain amount of just dirtiness that's involved in the whole business. But Dave and I used to go camping when we were first married. And the last time I went camping was actually here in Ledges State Park about 10 years ago. There were a group of us who came um, to Boone to work on a, uh, refurbishing a homeless shelter. And we camped at Ledges State Park slept in a tent on the ground. For me, there is something about sleeping on the ground. You know, just laying flat out on planet Earth, knowing that um, beneath me is only God's creation. I think we probably slept on an air mattress, but God's creation beneath that, the Earth, and, and wondering even, and this may sound crazy, if I could stretch my arms out far enough, if I could feel the curvature of the Earth and this beautiful globe that we live on. So there's something about camping that kind of appeals to me. I don't know that the Israelites felt that way. The Israelites were camping too, but for them it was an act of desperation. I go camping, and to tell you the truth, I can go home. I can um, pack up at the end of a week and return to my house and brush my teeth and open the refrigerator and find food. That's not the way it was. For the Israelites. Just three months earlier, the Israelites had been slaves in Egypt. Slaves. Somebody owned them. As human beings, I think the worst thing we can do to another human being is somehow take part of their life, um, determine their worth. And that's what happened to the Israelites. The uh, Pharaoh in Egypt owned them. Slavery that's one kind of taking control of someone else's life. War, that's another, where actually you take a life to win a war. But there are other kinds as well. Racism, poverty, neglect, abuse, hunger. Those are all ways that one group tells another group, we own you, you're not of value. And um, that's what the Israelites had faced in Egypt. Mike Powers told me recently, and I want to get the quote right, that Martin Luther King said, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. It bends toward justice because God bends it that way. 
our God is a God who works through history and, and does not allow people to suffer forever. And so God chose and equipped Moses to lead the people out of slavery and to lead them into the promised land. And that's kind of where we find them today in our scripture. They have been wandering in the wilderness for three, three months and uh, doing lots of just surviving during that time, but also lots of complaining. Biblical scholars will call the kind of complaining they do murmuring. Do you know that expression murmuring? It means to kind of rumble with complaints. Um, you probably have been involved in some murmuring because we human beings murmur a lot. When you were a kid, you might have murmured about your mom. Oh, mom always makes us set the table or mom always is complaining because we don't pick up our dirty clothes. Maybe you uh, now young people murmur, dad is always telling us shut off your cell phone. You might murmur at work about a boss who's particularly a, a micromanager that seems to be on your case all the time. Back in the day when we could gather at the coffee shop, it was pretty much a sport here in the U.S. to murmur about the government, to complain about the ways of the world and what was happening. Murmuring, maybe, is uh, the first expression of a people who have been hurt and they're beginning to regain their voice. When the Israelites were slaves, there was no sense murmuring. There was no one who was going to hear. There was no action that was gonna be taken. But now they're murmuring. Now they know that there's someone listening. So they wander in the wilderness for these three months and there are things to murmur about, things to complain about. At first they came upon water and the water was bitter and they murmured and God heard their cries and God made the water sweet. Then they murmured about what they would eat. They worried that they would go hungry. And so God heard their cries and God sent manna from heaven and quail so that they would have food to eat. At one point, there's no water at all. And God tells Moses to take his staff and strike it on a rock. And when he does, water comes from that rock. And even in all this, that they are surviving, there's still murmuring going on. And that murmuring is maybe they should just go back to Egypt. It's murmuring that's built on anxiety and fear. This is all too much. They can't handle it. And they wonder if they should return back to the slavery they'd experienced. But now they find themselves camped at the foot of a mountain. That's not a bad place to camp. If you're on a mountaintop, that mountain will catch rain as it goes by. And so water will come down the mountain. And that means that they'd have fresh water. It also means where there was water, there'd be vegetation and, and animals, so they'd have food to eat. So it might not have been bad, but those Israelites might have felt like they were trapped, that their backs were against that mountain and there was nowhere to go. And there they were at the base of a mountain. God called to Moses and Moses went up that mountain. And then you have this wonderful speech, these words that God shares about the Israelites, about all people actually. First of all, God says, remember all that I have done. Murmuring causes a kind of amnesia and we can get caught in murmuring and complaining and we can forget how much God has done. But Moses um, takes in that message Remember, says God. And then God says, um, you are my treasured possession. Pause and think of that for a moment. You are my treasured possession. And then God says one of the strangest things of all. I want you to be a priestly nation. Now the Israelites, you know, they were in pretty desperate straits. Um, to remember was important. To know that they were treasured, that must have been unbelievable. But to become a priestly nation, could they really do that? So God calls the Israelites to be priests and God calls us to be priests as well. Now they had a choice. They could stay at the base of that mountain and um, 
use the resources that God was given them and, and just simply stay there. But God thought there was more. God actually needed them, wanted them to become a priestly nation, meaning each one of them would be a priest to the world. And together, as what would eventually become the church, the church would become a place of priests, of people who cared about the world. Now that's kind of amazing to think about, isn't it? What that would mean. Um, Moses himself, I think, was a priest. And when you think about what a priest does, look to Moses' life. A priest carries the pain of the people to God and the needs of the people to God. And a priest brings what is holy about God back down to the people. A priest follows that ark of justice that Martin Luther King talked about. A priest changes the world to make it look more like God's kingdom. Are we priests? You know, I know I'm a pastor, but to tell you the truth, a lot of what I do doesn't feel very priestly to me. Um, oftentimes what I do in the church is simply administrative. I think there have been moments, I hope there have been moments when I've been a priest, but, um, but this business of carrying up to God the needs and the concerns of the people and bringing God down to the people, following the ark of justice, that's what a priest really does. I used to joke, Bob Pace, you may know Bob Pace, and I used to joke with Bob Pace, he's a blues singer, and he would sing a song called Give Me Jesus, and he would sing it with such um, emotion, so much um, meaning in it, that I would say to him, I may be a pastor, but Bob, you're my priest. I felt like he was carrying my pain to God and bringing God's holiness to me. Um, I think about um, John Lewis, who just died this week. John Lewis, congressman, um, uh, African-American person. Um, he also was a Baptist pastor, but I bet he would tell you the same. That it doesn't always feel like we're doing the work of priests, even if we're pastors. But John Lewis, in Congress, carried the pain of the people to God and the holiness of God to Congress. People regarded him as the conscience of Congress. His life was not easy. Um, you may know the story that at one time he went to his local public library as a little boy and asked for a library card and he was denied. As an adult, they finally gave him one. But nonetheless, he was someone who could be this conduit, who could go up to God and bring down holiness to the people to change their lives. I think about, uh, this may sound odd, but our college students are headed off, you know? Um, we have lots of college students who uh, just graduated, students who just graduated from high school. And I can call you by name, but I won't. You can look at each other now if you're sitting here, uh, look at your families. If you're going off to college, you're gonna get your education, wonderful things are gonna happen. happen. We want you to hear the message that the Israelites received. Remember all that God has done in your life. Know that you are treasured. But then also, what if you go off as priests, as people who go off to college to retain the sense of holiness, to bring it to other students, and to carry the pain of the students or the concerns or the worries, the joys as well, to God, to follow the ark that arc that leads toward justice. I don't know if our college students think of themselves as priests, but maybe they are. What's the current mountain in your life? You know, our Israelites were, their back was against the mountain and that's where um, Moses would go up the mountain to hear what God had to say. I suspect for each one of you, there's some sort of mountain that you're facing, some time in your life. Maybe it's, it's aging, maybe it's parenting, you know, our college students off to college. Maybe you're a teacher this fall and you're wondering, how's that gonna be? What's that gonna be like to teach in a classroom now during this pandemic? Whatever it is in those places with what you're doing, you're to be a priest, all of us to be priests. Isn't that a curious thing? God has asked us to do that for God. This is not news to you, but COVID-19 is raging. 
Now, um, as I'm recording this, there's 830 plus persons who've died from COVID. Thousands of people in the state of Iowa alone have come down with COVID. Right now, that's our mountain. And like the Israelites, we're camped at the base of it. And in many ways, we can feel like our back is up against that mountain of COVID. What are we to do? And you're good citizens. So there are things that you can do, um, actions you can take. But we are also called to be priests. A curious thing happened recently. Bob Meyer um, has been ringing the bell on Monday mornings, noting the um, number of people who died in Iowa uh, of COVID. This all started the first week of June. The Des Moines Area Religious Council has uh, asked us um, to ring our bell. And not all churches have bells, so we're blessed to have one. So we rang our bell. And um, that first June morning, there were other people who came to watch. Um, we've been ringing it ever since. And this week, WHO Channel 13 came and taped us and, and showed it as a news story. And you may have seen it. You can go to their Facebook page if you want to see it. The morning that they came, they were very excited about the bell and they wanted to hear what we had to say. They asked Bob to tell his story as to why it's so important. I left that time with a whole different sense of what we do on Monday morning. You know, it may be on Monday mornings, we are being priests to our neighborhood, to our community, to our state. When we ring that bell, when we pull that rope down, maybe we're pulling down the holiness of God and reminding people that this isn't just a number or a statistic, it's people. And maybe when we let that rope swing back up and that bell tolls, maybe we're taking the pain and the suffering of the people and we're sending it back up to God. Maybe we're doing our part as a church that is a church of priests intending to our neighborhood and our state. We're following the arc of history that bends toward justice. I don't know, something in me this week thought, this is the work of a priest. This is what God has called us to do. So I was thrilled when I read this scripture and was reminded that God is in this, even though our back is against the, the mountain of this pandemic, God is in it. I'm gonna leave the sermon there. What did God say? Remember, remember all that God has done for us. Do not let murmuring, complaining, a time of struggle, do not let us forget all that God has done. What else did God say? We are treasured possessions. No one owns you but God. And whatever may have happened to you in your life, good or bad, God still declares you God's own. And the last thing, the thing that kind of flips the switch, that really completes our relationship with God, God has asked each and every one of us, and us together as the church, to be priests, to bring the holiness of God to earth, to share it with others, to bring the pain and suffering to God, to follow that ark that all may live in justice. Amen. Well, good morning. You know, sometimes we go to the mountains uh, to escape, right? We go because we, uh, especially, you know, from Iowa, we go because it's, it's someplace a little different. Sometimes we go to the mountains because we're looking to seek God. I think even when we go, whether it's for escape or maybe it's for adventure, all of it's really to seek God. And we don't always actually physically get to go to the mountains. Sometimes we just go in our minds, right? We, we go to these places where we know um, we're pretty sure we're gonna encounter God. So this morning I want 
to offer a prayer that is really about, about us encountering God. So will you pray with me? Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for all of creation, for fields, for mountains, for the ocean. God, we just, we give you thanks because whenever we see creation, whenever we immerse ourselves in creation, God, we, we can't help but to encounter you. So we ask this morning, oh God, that, that you be with us. That you, that your Holy Spirit would guide us. That you would know that we are on this uh, never ending adventure of seeking you. God, because we wanna encounter you. Because we know when we do, that our lives will change. So we give you thanks and we ask you to be with us this morning. Some of us, God, some of your church is hurting and, and we need you. We need you, God, to be present in our lives. And some of your church, God, is just full of joy and gratitude this morning for all the goodness in our lives. Thank you for your church, oh God. And we're gonna pray together this morning the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hi, I'm Sue Brownlee. I'm chair of our church council. I'd just like to thank everybody for being here this morning. We all um, are happy that we're able to um, participate and I'm thankful for all of you and for your support of the church. Thanks.
I am now at the crow's nest at um, Ledges State Park. You can climb up. There's a lot of steps to climb up to be here. And I want to offer our blessing for today. You, my friends, you and I, we are priests. God has called us to be God's priests on earth. And that means, you know, we stand at the intersection of the world and the holy. We represent God. Um, right uh, when I look up one way, there are more stairs going up, you know. I have not reached the top by any means. And there are stairs going down. But this is the intersection. This is where I am. This is who we are called to be. Let me offer a blessing to all of you. May the love of God, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always and give you life. Amen. Amen. Have a great week. Thank you.